production incentives is a real key factor in uh, filmmaking today. And we'll probably be spending a fair amount of time talking about production incentives because a production incentive could actually help you get at least 20 to 30 percent of, of your project. So it's something that can't be ignored. And it actually always reminds me of um, something that my colleague John Hattity, who I think is in the room, said years ago. And I repeat this at every single panel that I talk at because I think it's really relevant. And I remember he said it and I got it really struck a chord because I say it today. He said in a room of producers that it's fiscally irresponsible for a producer today to produce a project and not at least consider, if not actually utilize an incentive. And the reason for that is there's so many opportunities for incentives. Here in the US alone, there are 37 uh, jurisdictions offering incentives, and those are just state incentives. We're not even talking about the states that offer local incentives. Around the world, there's probably over 45 uh, countries offering incentives. Even going back to the U.S., um, even on a federal level, some of you might be familiar with Section 181, and Section 181 came back uh, December of last year, retroactive to the beginning of 2015, and I think is going to be in place to the end of 2016. So again, you have a lot of options as producers to factor in incentives as part of your production plan. I'm going to quote another good friend of mine, Marianne Hughes, over at Disney, and I also say this at every panel. You know, when you're thinking about incentives, there's three things you need to really think about, and that's certainty in the law, certainty in the process, and certainty in the funding. And that's something that uh, my firm deals with all the time when we talk to our clients to give those, give them those assurances to, to let them know what's going on in the industry. And I was just going to spend a minute or two just giving you all a snapshot in terms of things that are kind of different that are happening right now, or things that we just want might want to hear about. I mentioned 181 being being back, and I think it's definitely being utilized by independent producers as well as the larger studios. California has, with their revised incentive, has been up and running for over a year and a half now. It's going really, really well. More money, um, more uh, opportunity for larger films and television. Lottery being replaced with the job ratio formula. And I'm hearing pretty much across the board, everyone is really happy with the, the job ratio formula, and they feel that it's really a very fair way of being uh, chosen for, for a project. New York is still very popular. New York is extremely busy. A year ago, I was saying that one of the criticisms about New York was the state was taking a bit too long to process applications. They fixed that in January of this year. You can now hire a third-party CPA to come in. That expedites the process. Um, it, it would be a mistake not to mention Georgia. Georgia is probably the third busiest jurisdiction right now in the U.S. I would say the most important thing I can say about Georgia, it's a very stable incentive program, amazing crew and infrastructure. <coughs> I am hearing from most of our clients is that Georgia might actually start be getting too busy. So they're looking for op other opportunities because there might not be stages or crew there. Louisiana. I mean, I could probably do a whole panel on Louisiana. Louisiana was the Hollywood of the South for 10 years plus. There were some legislative changes that were put in place last year that has handicapped the program a little bit, but it's coming back. The, the biggest change was a cap that really kind of um, fragmented the program for a while, but it's going to be up and running again in July of this year. And I think once they get past this first fiscal year of a cap, I think it'll be back on track again. Um, Ohio has just introduced some legislation where they're going to bump up their incentive to 30%. They're also going to bump up their funding from 20 to 40 per, uh, million. And in addition, they're going to be changing their program from a refundable to a transferable tax credit, which makes it much more marketable and actually a quicker turnaround for producers. Um, we all heard a few weeks ago with uh, British Columbia announcing a change to their program. They're actually dropping their program uh, from 33% to 28% in October. Um, but again, car Canada's hard to ignore with the exchange rate benefit, and most of our clients are budgeting just to see what that benefit could be by going to Canada. Uh, UK is still solid as ever. Um, again, with an amazing incentive, but also amazing crew base, as well as infrastructure across the board. Um, you know, I mentioned Georgia, the state, I think from a international perspective, Georgia, the country is now on the map with a 25% cash rebate. Um, it's just, we got introduced a few months ago. I think we're going to be hearing a lot about Georgia, the country. Um, and then even here at the, at the PGA conference, um, Iceland is here as a uh, sponsor mm -hmm. and, uh, Iceland just, just three days ago, re-upped their program for another five years and bumped it up to 25% as a cash rebate. So again, it's a quick snapshot of what's out there in the world of incentives. And again, we're not going to spend more time talking about specific incentives, but if you want, you can go to the EP uh, Financial Solutions website, which we just rebooted. Um, and I think I wish we had a chance to show it to you, but I'm really impressed of how it works. And take a look at it. And if you have any suggestions how we can make it work any better, let us know.